that sort of weighted steering so you can get the get the apex is perfect on public roads. Hello ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Supercars of London and as you can see behind me I have the brand new 2015 Audi TT. Now firstly I hope you guys enjoyed the vlog update that I provided with you yesterday which actually featured this car um, but this is going to be a more of an in-depth look and first impressions and opinions about the car. I've done the S1, I've done the S3 so um, I'm moved up to the TT, one before the Audi R8 V10 Plus, which I assume and hope is coming very, very soon. And the reason why I'm quite excited by this car is it's got the virtual cockpit, which um, is a derived bit of technology that is gonna be in the new Audi R8 V10 Plus. And I know it's another Audi, and um, I seem to be doing a lot of videos recently with Audi, but it's all thanks to Watford Audi who are providing me with the access of cars, which hopefully I'm gonna be able to explore a lot more um, with BMW. BMW, maybe potentially Mini and a few other cars other than just Audi um, but I'm trying to sort of sharpen my tools in terms of being able to review cars so that when I've been given much more access to vehicles such as Ferrari Lamborghini when I turn 25 then hopefully I'll have a more refined review style. The car here as you can see is a 2015 Audi TT 2 litre. It's not the Quattro system as you'll see that is missing from the aggressive new front grille which is more of a hexagon shape similar to the Lamborghini Huracan and the new headlights are actually really quite cool if you can see them. It's a nice specification this car. I wouldn't say it's the best. One, it doesn't have the Quattro system. Two, it doesn't have the S-Tronic gearbox. These diamond cut wheels are actually quite nice but I prefer the super multi-spoke wheels. And then from the side it still looks like a TT and I know there's going to be a lot of people out there that says it is still just a TT hairdresser's car but I think they've tried to go for a lot more of an aggressive look as opposed to the generic TT look that everyone's so familiar with and the thing with this car is it looks so much better than the convertible you all probably know that I don't like convertible cars because it loses the shape of the car. It also sometimes loses, loses the rigid, rigidity of the handling. I know the McLarens and Ferraris are slightly different with the monocoque, but this car, I think it looks all right. I think it looks pretty cool. And I'm down in Winchester. Uh, I've driven down here, which you would have seen on the vlog earlier. However, now I'm gonna give you guys what it's like to drive sort of first impressions insight into the new Audi TT. I'm gonna give you a lot of point of view on this because the virtual cockpit is super cool. So inside, you can see the virtual cockpit on because the engine is running. And um, at the moment we are in Mayfay, Mayflower Close. And you can change all of the views and stuff like that, which I'll show you in a little bit. We've got the aircon here. There's not much of a center console, a few buttons here. Obviously missing something here. Not sure what that is. Traction off. No idea what A off is. Drive select, which I'll go through. It's got a manual gearbox, which isn't the end of the world, but I much prefer the S-Tronic. And then here is where you do all the navigation, which comes up here, which is very cool for the driver. Not so cool for the passenger, who normally prefers to be the DJ, and it's also safer. Um, and then we've also got Alcantara inserts on the sports style seats, which is um, actually a really cool feature. And in the back, you've got enough room for a rucksack. But I actually think, hmm, Nah, there's not really that much room for a person. So, it's a manual car. It's um, the, the sort of electric parking sensor is quite weird. I didn't know how to turn it off, but all you have to do is find the biting point and then it works absolutely fine. And it works as every other manual car. There's nothing really I can talk about because it's not the S-Tronic, but I have had the S-Tronic in the S3 and they are so good at what they do that every single Audi needs to be in their Stronic. I don't know why people still use their left leg and left hand to change gear. It just it just seems so agricultural when you can have S-Tronic gearbox. Like I said back in my vlog yesterday, it's not the sound of a gear change, but the virtual cockpit is really quite cool. It just follows you around. It's kind of like having a Google Maps right there in front of you. Very, very easy to use. You don't have to take your eyes off and have a look at the sat nav, which is there or wherever it is. It's just um, really quite cool. And inside, 
the steering's quite light, it's quite nice to um, drive, turn the steering wheels, a really nice feel, the sort of mixture of materials that you get inside. The steering wheel is one of the coolest places, and the driver's seat is definitely the coolest place to sit. You don't want to be sitting anywhere else in this car, definitely just the driver's seat, which is I suppose the idea of making it more of a driver's car, making you feel more involved in driving. And it's actually got some power behind it as well. So having the virtual cockpit is super cool. I haven't actually put in a destination for the sat-nav. I just like having the map up because it's a cool little feature. Um, but the steering wheel is such an awesome thing and I think that they've used pretty much the same design for the new Audi R8 V10 Plus, which is a really sort of stripped down, sleek, cool looking thing. You've got all of the dials. You can change the view here, which puts it back to driving mode and if you actually turn sat nav off you get no sat nav whatsoever and you can just have music or radio or your phone media whatever it is like that the view that you get out of the wind mirror is really cool quite an aggressive looking shape and uh, you've also got the sort of wheel arch as well and pulling onto the motorway now you've got no problem with catching up with the cars I'm just like booting my foot down this is definitely a turbocharged engine I have no idea but it feels turbocharged <laughs> so many people are going to be watching this video going, how do you not know that's turbocharged? Or how do you, yeah, it's definitely turbocharged. Definitely, I just haven't done my research, guys, I apologise. We're pulling off the motorway now. We've had a good journey on the motorway. This place is a comfortable place to be. It's also very nice, luxurious, as you would expect from Audi. And now we're going to take it off into the country-ish roads and just the A roads. No, not the A roads, B roads, that's right, B roads. They're the more the twisty ones. So we can have a little bit of fun and see what this car's like is handling. The steering seems to stiffen up when you're under under a bit of load, which is quite a nice sort of touch in terms of when you're around town, you want the light steering because it's gonna be really fast. But then when you're actually like driving properly, you need that sort of weighted steering so you can get the, get the apex is perfect on public roads. section of the video we work out how wide this car is and how easy it is to drive down very narrow roads a lot narrower roads than I was expecting um, but this car is really fast the problem that I'm having is towards the top end of the rev range when so much of the power is there I'm really finding that the car becomes quite light at the front to handle and I mean I'm no technical genius or a driving expert but even I can feel it which makes me slightly on edge if I was to put my foot down a lot especially on these sorts of roads it just feels like it's quite light and maybe the Quattro system TT um, will have something that eradicates that basically but driving down these country roads now it doesn't feel wide it doesn't feel big I'm obviously sitting higher than I'm used to in um, the Audi R8 this is the great thing about Surrey roads. They're a lot of fun to drive down. One thing that I'm starting to realize is the suspension on this car is quite wobbly. So I'm gonna try driver select and put it in a different mode. Let's go for individual. Definitely feels like it's got a bit of oomph to it. Steering's definitely heavier. Oh yeah, definitely. The suspension here has vastly sort of stiffened up, which is great, especially on these roads when you're having a bit of fun. I'm gonna, oh yeah. Oh, the individual mode on the Audi is actually really good. <laughs> Yeah, this, com this car is a different car in different modes. I understand why there's a few different modes. This car is a lot of fun, so much fun that my body temperature has risen as the blood is pumping round on these country roads. Probably more nervous at the fact of how wide this car is. I'm used to my R8, which is slightly wider than this car. I've turned on the air conditioning, which is working fantastically, coming from the VEF 
relatively bland centre console. I haven't turned the traction control off because I don't want to end up in a bush. But I think, to be honest, in this car without the Quattro system, I'm relatively safe. But fingers crossed I can get my hands on the new TTS very soon, as soon as it registered, registers with Watford Audi. Um, but I think my favourite part of this car is definitely the virtual cockpit. I'm really looking forward to driving the Audi R8. Uh, the new one, the V10 Plus, with this fantastic steering wheel. It's going to have a few more buttons, especially the an anti-social button where you open up the exhaust systems. But that is it, ladies and gentlemen. This is my first impressions video of the Audi TT from Watford Audi. Thank you to the guys that, for allowing me to drive it for today. I hope you've enjoyed the past two videos as well. My vlog yesterday updating you on the Supercars of London channel, but also this video. Fingers crossed in the near future, I'm gonna be able to start diversifying away from just Audi. Um, I know there's a lot of Audi fans out there, but there's also a lot of other fans of other manufacturers as well. So fingers crossed I can get my hands on some cars and start reviewing more cars, comparing them, trying to find out what cars are better than others and exciting things like that. But this is just the beginning of my journey, talking about reviewing cars and um, hopefully I'm doing a good job of it. So thank you for watching. Make sure that you subscribe. I look forward to seeing you soon. There's gonna to be tons of supercar content coming soon. Lots more idiots go car shopping. In, in, in general, idiots do things. <laughs> um, but that's it for now, guys. Cheers, and I'll see you soon. Take care.